Breath, whisper, word, step one, next. You leave, you come back in search of the lost sound, you try to catch the edge. Here he is lonely and there is no special mood in him, just a sound, but the second one is still. Melody. Images pop up, unrelated phrases of memories at first. Suddenly, by chance, you come to an artist who is looking for another artist in the formless material, who once long ago found his sound. I sculpt eyebrows, I love eyes, I sculpt lips. I'm trying to get them to talk to me, but when I sculpt the eyes, I'm not sculpting the eyes, the look. If I sculpt my lips, it's like I can hear what's coming out of them, what he wants to say. How many composers are born almost every day? Today they appeared, and tomorrow they were forgotten about. I didn't want to be among them. It is better than to come to terms with the role of a teacher forever, but such moods did not last long. Life outside of creativity has always seemed not devoid of meaning, and no effort would be enough to drive away the impulses to creativity. Hall of the Moscow Conservatory Here he met with real music, his first author's compositions were played here. And now, after oblivion, his music was returning home. None of us knew it, none of us heard it. At best, we were losing something to ourselves. According to the notes, this is not at all the same as hearing it in the choir. And I just remember the deepest impression of the performance in Moscow, well, maybe Grekhaninov's best spiritual composition, his great cycle, which is called Holy Week. The Holy Week was preceded by the entry of the Lord into Jerusalem. And as he rode, they pastiched their clothes on the way. And when he neared the descent from Mount Leon, the whole multitude of disciples began in joy to publicly praise God for all the miracles they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to the highest. Grekhaninov's parents moved to Moscow from Przemysl, Kaluga province, settling on Smolensky Boulevard, where he was born on October 25, 1864. My father and mother were religious people. On Saturdays, all night, on Sundays, early mass was mandatory. My father loved to sing church songs, he was a sexton, as my mother expressed it. When I was about 12 years old, my father bought a music machine with two rolls of ten songs each. I spent hours turning them over until I learned them by heart. Then Grekhaninov sang in the gymnasium church choir and was even a soloist. When he grew up, the church choir was accepted and began to sing in the choir. So another wild boy appeared at home, a high school student and together with his father they sang church songs for two voices. Once we had a cousin who brought a guitar with him. Then he left. But I fell in love with the tools so much that I spent three months collecting piglets for breakfast and saved three rubles of money. That was happiness when I brought my guitar home and spent hours picking up accompaniment for songs. Subsequently, he asked about the fate of his romances of the Moscow addressee Vladimir Zirin. You can't get yellow fields anywhere here either. 
How sad it is to feel buried alive. Only at the age of 14 Grekinanov saw the piano for the first time. The melodies of familiar songs were not difficult to reproduce. When my father found out that I was dropping out of high school and entering the conservatory, he said, How, instead of being a doctor, do you want to go to the musician's back table? Of course, he did not give consent, but my craving for music and composition was irresistible. And then there was such a moment, he could not claim great success in the performing department. If a person at the age of 14 begins to study the piano somehow, he just won't make a great pianist. And hence the desire to realize oneself in music in some other way, and hence the composition. By the way, he was not very encouraged at first. He rather stubbornly went to some things himself. And when it began to concern him that his compositional attempts were not as well received at the Moscow Conservatory as he would have liked, he simply went to St. Petersburg. Rimsky-Korsakov became my mentor at the St. Petersburg Conservatory. I bring a job one day. Corrected, made a remark and generally praised. I was pleased to say that you approved the essay, but I am not satisfied with it myself. Why is that? He asks. It really reminds me of Borodin. Don't be afraid, he objected, if your essay looks like something. Be afraid when it doesn't look like anything. Perseverance in achieving the goal helped him in life. So it was with Vera. He did not see Vera Rehrberg, his chosen one, for exactly a year. Her father, the director of the Nizhny Novgorod Railway, considered the marriage of his daughter with a man of the wrong environment as a misalliance. To his daughter's pleas and tears, he offered a compromise. To break up, not to see and not to correspond, hoping that in a year her love will cool down. The opposite happened. Then life will separate them, but he will keep a tender attachment to Faith until her death. She will carefully collect and store his letters. With no one was he so frank in his feelings as with Vera. They lived in the area. Her father was a famous engineer, her brother was a famous architect. And Vera Ivanovna has always highly appreciated the Greek composer's creativity. She compiled such a book of memoirs, her unpublished book of the musical life of Alexander Krichaninov of, which is very interesting. And always, even when they had already parted, there were the warmest friendly relations between them. This human union will continue until the end of Vera Ivanovna's days. From the memoirs of Vera Ivanovna Grekininova. Alexander Tychonovich is 28 years old. His career is developing late. After graduating from the conservatory, we went on vacation to my father's estate in Jereva, near Moscow. His long-standing dream was to see the Volga, and so we decided to give ourselves this pleasure. Two weeks of traveling from Nizhny Novgorod to Astrakhan was such a joy that it is impossible to describe. Since then, every summer we rented a dacha somewhere on the banks of the Volga. In the evenings, Alexander Tychonovich went to the shore to listen to the songs coming from the rafts. He just showed that, say, folk art should constantly nourish the composer, constantly. And he made a lot of such compositions, which in fact are, as it were, a sketch that he heard in folk performance. A funny story happened in a manor near Ribinsk. There was no piano in it, and Alexander Tychonovich, on the advice of neighbors, went to the city. I took a piano there and four longshoremen from the pier. The cart was expensive, the instrument was carried on their hands, they rested on the way and Alexander Tychonovich played to the peasants hey, let's go down the mother, along the Volga. Smyasin said that they danced to Komarinskaya. Only in the evening, with a piano in their hands, they solemnly entered the courtyard of the estate. Even as a student, being a participant in the conservatoire concerts, Alexander Tychonovich once received a greeting from Tchaikovsky. Friends laughed, saying that then he did not wash his hands for a week. In October of the 93rd year, the great composer died. Grekininov wrote an elegy in memory of him, but considered it unsuccessful. It was only a long time later that he managed to compose a symphony worthy, 
as it seemed to him, of the memory of his beloved composer, the fourth. Regarding the fourth symphony, please find out which of the Leningrad symphony conductors is currently famous. I would ask Brains to send him the score, and he could perform it. After all, what a piggish thing to keep my music under a bushel. The first successes came, Gretchen and Av's string quartet was sent to the contest under the motto Vera, received an award, and was printed. The publisher Belayev also took the first notebook of romances, among which was a lullaby that later gained wide popularity. The author received 125 rubles and was completely delighted, not even suspecting what an unprofitable deal he had made. I spent the summer of the 95th year on the shore of my favorite Volga River, in the same cozy dacha near Rybinsk. The reign of Alexander III was so politically calm that I allowed myself the luxury of not reading newspapers. One could be quite sure that nothing important would happen during the four months of vacation. The success of the quartet could not but rejoice, but I decided to write a church choral composition. I decided to write a mass. At that time, the Synodal School Choir enjoyed great fame in Moscow, which performed mass. And in the autumn of the 98th year, the first liturgy of Grekoninov was performed by the same choir. The new hymns were a huge success, but the style in which Grekoninov and at the same time Kastolsky and Chesnikov began to write spiritual compositions was not recognized by lovers and connoisseurs of Orthodox Church singing for a long time. Chimenov is a very bright individual representative of the movement that was in the early 20th century in Russian sacred music and which is characterized by the term New Direction. The essence of the new government is not just a romantic attitude to spiritual creativity, but creativity based on everything accumulated in the church singing art. A little time has passed, and Grekoninov writes two choruses, I wave the sea and exclaim, Lord. Old church tunes and pop songs were taken as the material. When evening came, he sat down with the twelve disciples. And when they barely said, Truly I tell you that one of you will betray me, they were very sad and began to say to him, each of them, Is it not a Lord? He answered and said, Those who put their hand into the dish with me, this one will betray me. At this, Judas, who betrays him, said, Am I not Ravi? Jesus says to him, you said it. In general, it is difficult not to recognize Gretchen's music, because it compares favorably with other authors, especially spiritual music. If, of course, it is possible to talk about sensuality in the church incarnation. Gretchen has a lot of this. The theorists of our ancient music, they said that there is an artistic element in church music and it must be it cannot be avoided. Here the caused one has a lot of it. The zealots of orthodoxy should not blame, but be grateful to those new compilers of church hymns who turned their eyes to antiquity, and whose creativity, by its return to this hoary antiquity, brought a fresh stream into the, the atmosphere of theater, our church religion, which invited Grekoninov to write music for the tragedy of Alexei Tolstoy, Tsar Fedor. Full of passionate passion, the work that Stanislav Sky did with the entire troupe, most of the young actors, enthusiasm and faith in the enormous importance of the new theater captured me. It was a pleasant meeting with an old friend, Olga Nipper. What are you doing here? I asked her. I serve, she answered proudly, and you? And I write music. The first performance was an unprecedented success. I was proud of the knowledge that there was a drop of honey for me here. In the spring of 1999, Alexander Tychonovich informed me in Yalta that Alexei Stanislavsky had offered him to write music for the Snow Maiden. If there were few musical numbers in Tsar Fyodor, 
then here they had to play a huge role, and the director set special tasks for the composer. Moreover, Stanislav Sky wanted to stage this piece in real folk traditions to the point that the musicians had to play real folk instruments. And I had to travel all over Russia in order to get old Gusli, Dombra and other instruments there. The progressive critic was supportive. In the music of Mr. Grekininov and in the sense of style, there is a steady desire to get closer to what was sung or could have been sung in the old days in Russia. Maxim Gorky, a connoisseur and connoisseur of folk art, who wrote to Chekhov, was delighted with music. The Snow Maiden. This is an event, believe me. The music in The Snow Maiden is colorful to the point of insanity. Grekininov loves a folk song, knows it and feels it perfectly. Subsequently, at Stanislavsky's request, I wrote music for the death of John the Terrible. And Jesus said to the high priest and the ruler of the temple, and to the elders who had gathered against him, as if you had come out against a robber with swords and stakes to take me. The people who held Jesus cursed at him and beat him, and those who covered him hit him in the face and questioned him. About rivers, who hit you? And many other blasphemies were uttered against him. In my life as a composer, I had to read a lot of unfair, tactless, and even insulting things about myself, but I never stooped to the desire to respond to my critics. As the years passed, I became more and more convinced of the truth of my vocation and began to see my life's duty in this vocation. For several years now, Alexander Tychonovich has been working on his first opera based on old Russian epics. I found a room with a wonderful view of the sea and finished my Dobrynya here. The singer of the Mariinsky opera Chaprinikov lived in the same dacha. When I composed the second song of Alyosha Popovich, Flowers Bloomed in the Field, he learned it, and we performed at a concert in Yalta. The success was extraordinary. We repeated it. I remember the summer in Crimea as the happiest in my life. I was young and full of creativity. What else does a person need? In October, 1901, Rimsky-Korsakov arrived in Moscow. He visited Grekininov twice, listened attentively to Dobrynya Nikitik. At the beginning of March of the following year, a special commission of the Bolshoi Theater made a unanimous decision to accept the opera for production. The party of Dobrynya was taken by Shalyapin. To the great regret of the author, another artist Sabanov was not allowed to sing Alyosha Popovich. By a special order of the Directorate of the Imperial Theatres, it was forbidden to bring two outstanding singers on stage. Success fell to Shalyapin. Later, Grekininov dedicated a romance at the crossroads to Shalyapin, which he highly appreciated and certainly performed in his concerts. In Paris, Grekinin's essay Purely in Yagtania, recorded on a disc, received the prize of the newspaper Candide. Grekinin remembers that Rachmaninov came home to Shalyapin, who was a soloist on the record, and asked him to play the record three times in a row, each time carefully listening to the music. Moreover, Shalyapin could not refrain from tears. In the 30s, while in exile in Paris, Gakaninov participated in a competition to create the best matet and the best mass for Catholic liturgical texts. And he, imagine, managed to win this competition after all. All five of his matets and the festive place of Misa Festiva received prizes. He collected almost the entire prize fund. I think I wrote to you that I graduated from the Mass with a Latin text and with a passion for its orchestra. 
And what, do you have a spiritual composition in Western composers, such as Bach's Matthew Passion or Mozart's Requiem, are also not allowed to perform? It remains with the Greek composition of a difficult fate, about which he did not stop thinking all his life. It is connected with the search for new means of expression. Valery Polyansky is one of those who returns Gretchenanov to us. The working moment of recording the opera Sister Beatrice. The work is special, subtle, sensual, and piercing. The plot of the opera was the mystery of the French symbolist poet Maeterlinck. The nun Beatrice, with the tacit consent of the patron saint of the Madonna Orphanage, flees from the monastery. Madonna transforms into Beatrice and performs miracles of mercy. When the real Beatrice comes back and asks for forgiveness, it turns out that here she is perceived as a holy and immaculate virgin. What a wonderful story about the idea of forgiveness. Sister Beatrice can no longer hear the music streaming from every scene of this masterpiece. Rekhanov took the task very seriously. He even went to France to visit Maeterlinck's relatives in order to coordinate the French text with the Russian. In order to move away from orthodoxy, I tried to get into the ancient Gregorian melodies and, it seems, quite successfully absorbed them into myself, without hearing reproach for the inappropriate style of my music to the Catholic style. Suddenly one of the musicians was saying, Oh, you know, this is a familiar melody. That's it, you know, that's it, that's it. I say, yes, that's right, it's familiar, but only this is written a hundred years earlier than what you and I know. You see, his range, of course, is huge, from a symphony to an opera, to children's songs, to huge spiritual compositions. He is recognizable, he is original. And despite the fact that he lived in the West for a long, large part of his life, I mean his conscious life, he remained Russian. I mean, I remained Russian in music. Staged in a private opera by Zemin's sister Beatrice, after several successful performances, she was removed from the repertoire and only 80 years later found a second incarnation. Then and much later I didn't know if this ill-fated creation of mine would ever see the light. For Tsarist Russia, Beatrice's sister represented a blasphemous work and was unacceptable. In Soviet Russia, it is unacceptable because of its religious and mystical nature. But I was filled with faith that her time would come someday. At the same time, Grekhaninov wrote Holy Week, the culmination of his choral work. In the last week before Easter, the Church remembers the last days of the life of Jesus Christ on earth his crucifixion sufferings, deaths, burials. Rakhinov believed that there was no need to create special music for the people. Write a real high spiritual work and the mass will realize it. That's what he thought, and he believed that the church was the main house in which people could join the high art. Since many halls, and even more chamber salons, are inaccessible to the broad masses of the people. I have always said and written that the introduction, at least at first, of organs or physical harmonies into our church, would bring a lot of beauty to our ritual. After all, the scripture says, praise God, praise him on the strings and organ. Alas, our proposal with Kostolsky and Chesnikov to introduce this instrument into church hymns was not accepted. Grekhaninov's essay is gaining great popularity in St. Petersburg. The doors to all aristocratic and court circles interested in music open before him. The Empress sings his duets, the professors of the conservatory contribute his romances to the class compositions. Recognition, success accompanies Grechaninov. I was told by eyewitnesses that the Emperor was so impressed by my faith that he gave an order for the court chapel to perform it in church every Sunday.
The result of this success was that I received a pension of 2,000 rubles from the sovereign. I breathed freely and since then began to live quietly, without giving lessons. However, everything ended with the first February revolution. The news of the February revolution was received in Moscow with great enthusiasm. People poured out on the street, everyone has red flowers in their buttonholes. The new Russia needs a new anthem. Grekinanov rushes home to the piano and literally composes music in half an hour, but here are the words. A call to the poet Constantine Balmont follows. It arrives instantly and in a few minutes the text is ready. I'm going to the Kuznetsky Bridge to the Gudko Publishing House. Wasting no time, he goes to the printing press, and in the middle of the next day, the window of his store was decorated with a new anthem of Free Russia. All proceeds from the sale are directed to the benefit of released political prisoners. When the theaters opened, at the first performance at the Bolshoi Theater, the anthem was performed by a choir and orchestra conducted by Cooper, along with the Marseillaise. The anthem has become popular not only in Russia, but also abroad. In America, Kurt Schindler and his wife translated the text into English, and it gained huge popularity and more than in Russia. She held on for a long time after there was no freedom in Russia anymore. It was the first anthem of Free Russia. Before the national ones appeared, here is the current anthem and so on. And all these patriotic songs. Grekinanov was the first after all. In addition, he has several more revolutionary songs that are also unknown to anyone. But the intoxication of freedom did not last long. The ghosts of a new revolution appeared. October was approaching. At last it came, and with it came cold, hunger, and the almost complete disappearance of spiritual life. The new art swept away everything previously accumulated. Sounds and pictures of the recent past came to life in my memory like mirages. In Soviet Russia there is a struggle for the intelligentsia. There is only one requirement, to take part in common work with the proletariat or to remain alone. The truth is not yet in solitary. In particular, in the magazine Music and Revolution, there was then such a magazine, a discussion by Lev Lebedinsky and Leonid Sabinev was published. Sabanev just so believed that music is apolitical, it is a world in itself. And Lebedinsky objected to him and accused him of ignorance of Marxism. Of course, Grekinanov was not familiar with the teaching, which is the only true one, because it is correct. Moreover, he defiantly gives his third symphony an idyllic program name, as if emphasizing that it has nothing to do with the turbulent events of the surrounding reality. It was the Friday before Easter and the hour and Pilate said to the Jews, Everything, your king. But they cried out, Take him, take him, crucify him. And they took Jesus and led him away. And carrying his cross, he went out to a place called Golgotha, and there they crucified him and with him two others on one side and on the other, and in the middle of Jesus. The new government turns to the church, but not for faith, but by force taking away its symbols. It is amazing that at a time when the very idea of spirituality seemed ridiculous, a Greek suddenly feels the need for spiritual writing. He reworks and orchestrates the demerit liturgy in a new way and even performs it. Having no children of his own, he watches with pain the homeless, who suddenly filled the streets of Moscow from nowhere. He takes part in lectures and concerts for proletarian children. 
even teaches in the 20th year in a children's colony near Folsk. He has written a lot for children before. It seems that no artist has yet managed to reveal to us in such a magically uncomplicated form all the secrets of a pure child's soul, as Gretchaninov did. So the pre-revolutionary newspapers wrote about his compositions for children and called him a musical Anderson. And then he got lucky. Children's music turned out to be almost the only reason why the Soviet authorities at least sometimes allowed to remember this composer. You know, he has done so much in this direction. The Nesson school actually lived by his music. He has written so many children's cycles, which are intended specifically for children's music school, lovers of choral singing. There has long been a Nesson sisters music school in Moscow, from which many first-class musicians came out. I was invited to this school by a music theory teacher. I got close to Elena Fabianovna, the eldest of the sisters, who organized a children's choir class. A few songs by Tchaikovsky and Arensky are all that existed then in the Russian musical literature of this genre. I willingly got down to business and wrote six two-voice songs based on folk texts. These songs were a great success and marked the beginning of a number of similar collections. From emigration, he always sent to Moscow Elena Fabianovna Nisina to his favorite school what he composed in the field of children's music. His correspondence with his sisters was maintained almost until the end of his life. Nisinka was associated with his memory of his native Moscow, which the inexorable time could not erase. Of course, he felt sorry for Moscow, it was his home. Relatives stayed here. Well, my whole life is here. He was already many years old. He is already 60 years old, it's like his whole life. He didn't know how much more he was destined for. But there were many more, but he didn't know that then. And then he knew one thing. The present time, alas, does not need it. He wrote church music when the church was refused, when churches were eaten, when churches were smashed. It was about the sixth hour of the day, and darkness fell over the whole earth until the ninth hour. And the sun went dark, and the veil in the temple was torn in the middle. Jesus, shouting with a loud voice, said, Father. Into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he let down his spirit. It was the spring of the 25th year, when Maria Grigorievna and I left our homeland forever. Since then, I have been living with an unhealed heart wound. She always makes herself felt, and she will probably have to leave this world that was beautiful, but suddenly stopped being like that. He gave up everything. He and Maria Grigorievna left. Well, maybe with a small suitcase of some kind. He tried. His library was destroyed. It is unknown where she is. It was like that back then. A truck came at night, put everything valuable. The remaining one was taken away from some intellectual. Where it then went is unknown. It means that a large book music library has disappeared. Many manuscripts were missing. Grekinov took what he could with him. And yet it's 200 opuses. 200. The West greeted him enthusiastically. Successful tours in the Baltic states, in Riga, he is welcomed by thousands of fans. Europe, France, Italy, Switzerland, good performance fees. Everything is developing favorably, 
and suddenly an unexpected letter from Paris to Vera Ivanovna. I'm so lonely. I don't have any friends here. I don't find any musicians here who would love music so much to gather and study it. He is shocked by America. He could not imagine such an attitude towards himself even in his wildest fantasies. My performance yesterday was an extraordinary success. A full hall with a capacity of more than 3,000 people, long ovations at my appearance, lots of encores. Newspapers put my portraits, interview me, artists sculpt and paint my portraits. It's such a joy to see so many friends of my music. And such bitterness to think that at home they treat me as a stepson. They are tempted to return to Russia. But I will be pilloried as a spiritual composer, and I value this title so much. Yes, there, as, indeed, everywhere, serve modern music. What would I do there? Because of Hitlerism, German publishers cannot publish foreigners. What time do we live in? He has survived three revolutions, two wars. What else could have happened to him? He died late. He died in the mid-50s. Before his death in America, his compositions were not many, but they were performed. And even in the 50s, his late opera, the latest and very good opera, The Marriage by Gogol, was staged in Paris by a private Russian troupe. Some Russian writers abroad complain that, being cut off from their native soil, they cannot create. He wrote to his friend Ziering from New York in 1950th year. I didn't have that. On the contrary, I work a lot in my compositions written here, as if my Russian nature is even more felt than in the previous ones written at home. I am pleased to share with you the success and very great success that the marriage in Paris had. Both the press and my friends have testified to me. I wish you... They attached too much importance to the musical language, whereas the main thing in our art is completely different. This is the feeling and mood that the artist experiences when creating his work. And if he managed to convey the mood to the performer and the listener, then good for him. Leaving this beautiful world, he will be able to say to himself, I have fulfilled my life path. Will I be able to tell myself this when my time comes?